First of all, let's make sure that the drive that we are about to image is in good condition. Click Diagnose and select the port on which the drive is located. And then click the Start button at the bottom of the screen. During the diagnostics process, the following subsystems of the drive will be checked. The circuit board, the heads, the media surface, the firmware and the file system of the drive. At the end of each subsection of the diagnostics report, there will be a summary line, either in green color, in yellow or in red, summarizing the state of the subsystem of the drive. If it is in green color, it means that the uh, subsystem of the drive is in good condition. If it's in yellow, there is some issues with the subsystem of the drive. If it's in red, the issues are severe. Also, at the top of the diagnostics report, there is a box, either in green, yellow or red color, giving you the summary of the overall state of the drive. Now that we have made sure that this drive is in good condition, we can proceed with imaging. Click Image, select the source drive, then select the target drive, click Continue button, and the Start button. Now confirm that you are ready to override the data on the target device. And the imaging process has started. While this imaging session is running, let's return to the home page. You must have already noticed that Taskforce has a task-oriented workflow. You have Diagnose, Image, Hash, Wipe and other buttons. Within the other category you can see additional tasks. And if you would like to hash a device, click Hash. And now you can select a device. In this panel you can see all 18 of Taskforce's ports. There are 6 SATA ports. six. SAS ports that can also be used for SATA devices, four USB ports, one IDE, and one extensions port. If there are any devices that have an HPA or DCO area enabled on them, an ETA password, or even a short circuit situation, there will be a notification about it in red color next to the details of this drive in its port. Now you can select a drive that you would like to hash and click the start button to start the process. By returning to the home page, you can track the currently running processes. Now let's start an imaging session. Once you have clicked Image, you will see the panel with all the devices currently connected to Taskforce. However, you are only able to select the devices in the source mode. This indication here means that the port is currently in the source mode. Remember that the source switch is located next to this port on the hardware unit. You will not be able to select a target device uh, here because this is the Select Source Device panel. In the Select Target Devices panel, you are able to select one or more targets for this imaging session. Up to five targets can be selected per session. And you will not be able to select a source device, thus protecting all the evidence drives connected to the unit. Then click Continue, double check your imaging settings, and click the Start button. If your target device is smaller than the source device, you will be prompted to confirm your action. You will also be prompted to confirm that you are ready to override the data on the target device. Now the imaging session has started. You can return to the home page to track the status of all the currently running processes.
Once you're in the home screen, you see the list of the currently running processes in the upper part of the screen, in the section called Active. You can click on any of these processes to see what is happening during this session in more detail. Below the actively running processes, there is a section called Completed. In it, you can see all the reports from the most recent to the oldest generated by this task force unit. Clicking on any of the lines in this list opens the respective report. Because Task Force can be used by multiple users at the same time, who can open its interface in Google Chrome browser on their workstations, you want to be aware of the currently used capacity of the Task Force. Simply click the logo at the top of the screen to see how much of Task Force's capacity is currently being used. Task Force can achieve up to 15 terabytes per hour speed, or even more so you can add more operations. There are now four active processes running and the overall speed is only three terabytes per hour. If you want to look for a specific report among all the completed tasks, use search words such as diagnostics to find a certain record. You can also search for a specific drive or use a combination of search words to get a more relevant search output. Let's diagnose a drive. Click Diagnose and select the port to which the drive is connected. At the top here you see the port and these are the subsystems of the drive that will be diagnosed during this checkup. Click the start button to launch the process. So what happens during the diagnostics? First, Task Force measures and analyzes the currents to detect problems with PCB. It also analyzes each of the heads to detect head damage. Then Task Force performs initial media surface reading to detect issues and to estimate the time of imaging. Then there is a set of firmware checks, including smart analysis, HPA and DCO checks. And finally, Task Force scans for file systems and detects any logical problems with them. We at Atelo Technology are strong proponents of running diagnostics on every evidence drive. First of all, if a drive is damaged, diagnostics help you um, take an informed decision how exactly to get evidence from this drive using Task Force. Because you need to make sure that by imaging an evidence drive, you are not causing further damage to it. Secondly, Diagnostics shows you if there is any data on the drive, thus helping you to prioritize the drive, among others, involved in the same case. Last but not least, Task Force gives you an estimate of how much time it will take you to image this drive. If we look at the current Diagnostics, there are a few issues that the Diagnostics report points to. First, one of, the, uh, one of the smart table parameters indicates issues. The drive is not in a perfect condition, but Task Force can still image data from it. Secondly, there are many small size partitions of an unknown type on this drive, 
and they only take up 4% of the drive space, while 96% of the drive is not associated with any partition. It is very unusual. Now let's have a look at a diagnostics report of a drive in good condition. Let's open any green diagnostics report. First of all, this report shows that we need 2 hours and 11 minutes to image this device. Also, the analysis of the file system shows us that there are two partitions on this drive and they take all of its space. Let's image a drive to a few different targets. Click Image and select the source drive. In Select Target Devices panel, select up to five targets you will be imaging to. To image to a file, select the File option. And if you want the image file to be written onto another drive, click at Storage button and select the drive on which the image file will be stored. If this drive is not in XFAT format, you will be prompted to format it accordingly. The formatting will take a few seconds. Now click the plus icon to create an image file on this drive and fill in the file information. If it is an EO1 file, you can choose if you want it to be a compressed EO1. The drive that now contains this file is in storage mode and it can no longer serve as a target drive. It's not available for selection. If you want to have another image on a target, select another device in a target mode. If you want to store an image on your local server as well, select the file option again and this time create a file inside a folder on the server. You can adjust the format of the file accordingly. Click Continue button, double check the imaging settings and that all the targets are assigned correctly. Click Start and confirm that you want the data on the target drive to be overwritten. Let's do logical imaging. Click image and select the source drive. You can see that 50% of data from this drive was imaged during the previous imaging session. Now you want to start a new one. Select a target device and click continue. To do logical imaging, you will need to adjust the default settings. Click Change button at the top of the page. You are now in the Passes tab of the settings. 
The multipass imaging system is what allows Task Force to handle damaged media. The settings within the passes are adjustable, but the default settings are based on our decades-long experience in data recovery and work in 95% of all cases. At the bottom right corner of the settings page, you can select a preset that can be created for a specific type of cases and shared with your colleagues. In the Hashes tab, you can adjust hashing options, including the type of hash and how it is calculated within an imaging session, before, during, or after one. In the Miscellaneous tab, you can adjust additional settings like reading smart table information before and after imaging, powering down the source and target devices when finished, limiting target drive size to evidence drive size, and saving imaging report in the target folder. With the default imaging settings, all sectors of an evidence drive are imaged. To image only sectors that contain data, click All Sectors in the Passes tab and change it to Sectors with Data. Then you can look up the partitions found on the source drive. Click Save. Please note that calculating hash during imaging is impossible if you do selective imaging. This setting is changed in the Hashes tab automatically. Now click Start to proceed with imaging. The sectors that belong to partitions and contain data are marked blue in the imaging map bar. They gradually change their color to green as they are imaged. Below the imaging map bar, there is a black and green read speed graph that shows the time rate at which Task Force is reading data from the source drive. Lower yet, there is the imaging log that records the key events of this imaging session, including the start of the imaging and the time when each of the partitions started to be imaged. Between the imaging map bar and the read speed graph, there are different indices that help you understand the progress of the session. The percentage indicates the proportion of the imaged data to the total planned amount of data. You can also see the current speed of imaging and the estimated time left. This session should be completed in under two minutes. In the bottom right corner, you can click View Settings button to see the settings of the current imaging session. To image a damaged drive, click Image and select your source and target devices. Let's have a thorough look at the imaging settings to understand how they help Task Force handle the damaged media. In the Passes tab of the Imaging Settings, you can see the five passes. There are a few key settings each pass has. The jump on error defines the number of sectors the imaging engine will skip on this pass upon encountering an error. The timeout setting defines the maximum time task force will spend trying to read the data within a sector. The max read block size setting. The bigger it is, the faster the data is read, but smaller blocks allow more thorough data retrieval process. To adjust the settings, click on a pass. Here you can see the reverse direction setting. 
it allows reading sectors of the drive in the opposite direction on this pass. Disable read look ahead option prevents the drive from caching the sectors beyond those addressed by the imager. You can adjust the pattern with which the unreadable sectors will be filled on the target device. The passes with adjusted settings are marked yellow. In the Hashes tab, you can adjust how hash should be calculated during this imaging session and select the type of hash to be used. In the miscellaneous tab, you can select a few different options. Read smart table information before and after imaging helps keep track of the drive's health status. Power down source and target devices helps when, for example, you deal with an unstable source drive. Limit target disk size to source size using HPA for SATA devices. And finally, save report in the target file folder, which is available only for image file targets. By clicking back, the adjusted settings are saved. You can double check that all the settings are correct and then go to the presets. There are currently two presets, Default and Vitali. Let's create a new one so that later you can easily use the same settings when dealing with a similar case. The presets can be exported, sent to your colleagues so that they import and use them on their task force units. Now let's start the imaging session. And here comes a bad sector. It is marked red and Task Force performs a jump by 1 million sectors. Above the read speed graph you can see the total number of encountered errors on this drive and it is constantly growing. The same is recorded in the log. Now let me explain exactly how the multipass imaging system works and retrieves data from the bad drives. This is the space of the drive that you are imaging, and Task Force reads data sequentially from the first sector to the last one. Once Task Force encounters a block that contains a bad sector, it performs an automatic jump by 1 million sectors as defined by the settings of the first imaging pass. Then it continues to image the sectors after the skipped area. So why do we choose to perform the jump after an error? Because based on our experience in data recovery, errors often come in groups, and you will encounter more errors in the subsequent sectors in many cases. That's why we choose to skip the potentially bad area and continue imaging the good areas of the drive first for a more efficient imaging process and more gentle treatment of the drive. Once the first pass is completed, Task Force returns to the problematic area of the drive and spends a little more time, as defined in the timeout settings, to read data in this area. 
Should it encounter another bad sector in this area, it will make a smaller jump by 20,000 sectors. On each subsequent pass, task force will be allocating more time to read a bad sector and making smaller jumps to narrow down the bad areas of the drive and efficiently read data from the good ones. At the end of the last pass, you will end up with 90 or more percent of the data from the drive. Very often, it's 95, sometimes 99 percent. With reverse imaging option selected on the second pass, task force may be able to narrow down the bad area of the drive faster, as it will read all the good sectors in the opposite direction up until it hits a bad sector. Coming back to our imagings of a bad drive, you can see that there are already 51 bad sectors encountered during this session. And down under the read speed graph, the log has recorded all the jumps it made. In task force, you can pause and resume an imaging session. A report about the section will be automatically created by the system. To resume the session, click Image, select the same source drive. The paused session will be listed and by clicking the Resume button next to the session, you can restart it. Task Force will continue to image only the remaining sectors that it hasn't imaged before the pause. Back in the home screen, you can look up all the reports related to this session. The imaging started report enlists all the initial settings, the times, and other details. The imaging paused report gives you the log with all the errors and jumps performed. The imaging resumed report again shows you the settings and the timestamps. Let's start another imaging session. Click Image and select the source. Here you can see the imaging sessions that have been done with this device as a source. The imaging sessions ran to different target drives and had a different percentage of the drive imaged. Both sessions can be resumed as long as both the source and the target devices are connected to Task Force. Now click Start New button and select another set of targets. This time we will select two targets, one of them is a drive, another one is a file. Click the plus icon to create a new file. Here you can choose whether the file should be a compressed to one. Once you have the target selected, click Continue. To adjust the imaging settings, click Change. What looks different during this session is that there is only one pass, and it is because with a compressed to one file, imaging can only be performed in one pass. Let's image only a part of this source drive. Click on the path settings and change the range to be imaged to 5 million sectors. Then click Save. In the Hashes tab, we select the hashing type and how it should be hashed. In the miscellaneous tab, we select read smart information before the start and after the end of Im imaging. Before starting the session, to save the settings, click back. Please note that the settings will be saved in the currently selected preset. If you want the current preset to remain unchanged, switch to default preset or create a new custom preset before you click back and save the adjusted settings.
In the top right corner, you can see that there are two targets in this session. You can look up the details of the target by clicking this element. It will take a few more seconds for the imaging session to be completed. And the post hashing will calculate hash for both targets. Once the post hashing is completed, you can see the automatically generated imaging completed report, which gives you a detailed record of the session, including the imager, the source drive, the target drives, the passes and their settings. You cannot see the specific settings here, but there is a separate imaging started report that is also automatically generated that enlists all these details. We will look at it later. Here, you can also see the hash values of the source and both targets. Lower in the report, you can see the smart table before imaging that provides the stats of the drives operation as recorded by the drive zone system and another one recorded after imaging. Comparing these two tables helps keep track of changes in the drive's health status. All the differences between the indices in these two tables would be highlighted yellow. You do not see any yellow highlights in these tables, which means that the drive is in good condition. And finally, the imaging log at the bottom of the report provides the record of all key events of this imaging session, including the time when the session started and was completed, when post-hashing post started and was completed. Click Go to Case button to view all the reports related to this drive. Open Imaging Started report to view the settings selected for this imaging session. Both of these reports can also be found in the home screen. Open them by clicking the respective report. You can switch between reports with the help of the arrows at the bottom of the screen. In the home screen, you can see all the reports as generated from the most recent one to the earliest one. Every action that happened to the connected drives or the unit itself is automatically recorded, including the physical turning on or off of the source switch on the hardware unit. When you open any drive-related report, at the top you will see the header. It contains the most important details of the drive, the port, the case, and the task force unit. Below, there is always the time the report was generated, task force details, including the IP address, the serial number, the software and firmware version. The header indicates that the header was connected to a certain port and write protection was enabled or disabled during this session. And there are drive details as well, including the model, the serial number, and the capacity of the device. If you switch between different reports within this case, you will see that the header remains identical, last for the time of report creation. And if case number and other details are added at some point, they will be displayed in the subsequently generated reports. To ensure that all of your reports have case details filled out consistently, go to the service menu by clicking the menu icon at the bottom right corner of the screen and open the settings category. In the cases subcategory, 
enable the set case details before task start feature, which will prompt operators to fill out case details before any operation can be performed on a drive. Click the Reports button in the top panel to view all the reports ever generated by this task force unit. You can select all the reports and have them printed. But given how many reports there may be, usually you want to search for specific reports. For example, you can search for all reports related to Toshiba devices. and then you can have them printed out. You can choose to have the logs, non-device reports and information about unit components to be excluded from this printing job. By clicking Generate button, you generate the list of all selected reports. Scroll down to Preview And here you can notice some reports whose headers look somewhat different. These reports were exported from Atola Inside Forensic, another device produced by Atola, and these reports were imported to this task force database. Click the Print button and choose if you want to generate a PDF file with all the reports or have them sent to a printer. Click the Cases button and find the case which you would like to export from the database. Select the case, click the Export button at the bottom of the page. The case has been downloaded. Now let's import it back to the task forces database. If the case number and the device in the case coincide, the previously existing case will simply merge with the imported one. Click Wipe in the Task Panel. None of the source devices are available for selection to ensure the integrity of the data on all evidence drives connected to the system. Only the drives in target mode can be selected for this action. Select the drive you want to wipe, and in the Wiping settings you can adjust the range you want to wipe and the wiping method. The first one is linear wiping, where you enter the pattern with which you want to fill the sectors in either hex or ASCII mode. With this wiping method, the drive space is filled with zeros with the LPA number of the corresponding sector at the beginning of each sector. The NIST method implies that the drive space will be filled with binary zeros and verified afterwards. For the DoD method, which performs a three-pass linear overwriting of this drive space with different patterns, you can enter a specific pattern you would like to be used on the last pass. Random is the method which overrides all the bytes within sectors with random values. Select the method you want, click the Start button, and Confirm. 
Wiping is a very fast process. This drive will be wiped in under 9 minutes. With just this one session, Task Horse runs at 2 terabytes per hour. In the other section of the task menu, you will find two features View Smart and Unclip HP DCO. The first one is View Smart. Select this feature and then the drive, the status of which you would like to look up. Click the Start button. And immediately you see the table with a number of attributes. These are the statistics that the drive is keeping track of to provide the users with information that can predict the health of the drive. Not all of the parameters are equally critical. The most important ones are reallocated sector count, current pending sector count, and uncorrectable sector count. This drive has two of these parameters in fail status, which means that the drive is in critically bad condition. The second feature here is Unclip HP ADCO. Click the function and it will open the device selection panel. You can see a notification in this port about the HPA restriction enabled on a drive. If you try to image the drive, you will also notice the same notification. And all across the task force interface, this device will be listed with this notification. By clicking on it, in the devices panel, you open the latest diagnostics report, which says that the device has a 3 terabyte capacity. Run the diagnostics again and look up the firmware part of the report for more details. The diagnostics report shows that there is HPA enabled on the device. Now go to Other, click Unclip HPA DCO, and click the Unclip button. Within a second or two, you have the restriction removed, and now you can proceed with imaging. The native max address has been restored to the original value and the original 4 terabyte capacity. All sectors of the drive are now accessible. In the home screen, the Unclip HPA report is now listed. When you try to image or hash the drive, the actual 4 terabyte capacity will now be displayed. You can now proceed with imaging the drive. In Task Force, there is one more way of handling the drives limited with HPA. Click Image, select the source that is limited with HPA and appears to have 500 gigabytes of capacity. Click Start New button and select the target drive. In the pop-up window, the notification suggests that you unclip the HPA until the next power cycle. Click Yes. Now you can already see that the capacity in fact appears to be 1 terabyte. The log recorded that at the beginning of this imaging session the HPA was unclipped. Now the whole area of the drive can be imaged, but the next time the drive is powered, the HPA will be activated again. This technique allows you to get access to the data of the drive while avoiding changing its status. Let's have a look at the service menu. Click the menu button in the top right corner of the screen. In the general settings category, you can select the language of the interface and switch between English, Chinese and Japanese.
the Work Folder option defines where the case management system will be stored. It is by default stored on the NVMe drive that is installed inside the unit. But you can also switch to the external storage and store the database on your server. When you switch to a remote folder, you are starting a new database in the new location. If you switch back to the internal storage, you will have access to the old database again. Device Ready Timeout sets the waiting time for a drive to become ready after it has been powered. Upon completion of this timeout, Task Force will stop waiting for the device to become ready. The two subsequent options are for powering off of the devices upon completing tasks and when they have been idle for a while. Both options are meant to decrease power consumption by the unit and a more careful treatment of the connected drives. In the Network section of the Settings menu, there is Wi-Fi Hotspot option. If you enable the hotspot, Task Force can be accessed from the other Wi-Fi enabled devices by entering the IP address indicated here in their Google Chrome browsers. By default, the hotspot is disabled. To connect to the network, you need to know the SSID and the password, which you can adjust the way you like. If you tick Hidden Mode checkbox, the network will be invisible. There are two 10 gigabit Ethernet ports in Task Force. Once one of them is connected to the local network, you can see the network details here. The second Ethernet cable is not plugged. Enabling Jumbo frames helps speed up the data transfer rate. You also would need to activate Jumbo frames in the settings of the server's network adapter as well as in the settings of the network switch, should it be necessary. Store shared folder logins and passwords in Task Force can be enabled to avoid entering logins and passwords to shared folders every time. These credentials will be stored as encrypted data. To restore the default settings, click the reset button at the bottom of the page. Open the service menu and click Release Notes category to view new and updated features of the most recent Task Force firmware release, so that you can take advantage of the latest additions to the tool. The Release Notes explain the major features of this release, and in the change log below, you can see the full list as well as the bug fixes. Click Update Firmware category in the service menu and you get the instructions how to upgrade to the latest version. In the .atola.com website, click the download button to get the latest firmware version. 
you can also see here a link to the changelog and a link to the page where you can get subscribed to get notifications about the releases. There are two ways of updating. The first one from downloads folder is for when the unit is connected to the network. The second one with USB stick allows upgrading the firmware without getting the unit connected to the network in standalone mode. Simply plug an XFAT USB stick with the firmware version to one of the USB ports of the unit. Let's select a firmware file from the downloads folder now, where we have an upcoming release firmware. Click the update button and wait a few moments for the update to be installed. In the home screen, a report about firmware update has been created. When you open the service menu now, you can see a new category called Express Mode that has only been added in this firmware version. By clicking the Activation Status category of the service menu, you can check the status and expiry date of your subscription. To update the subscription, you need to get an activation code. It will be sent to you upon the purchase of your subscription. To buy the subscription, go to atola.com website and in ordering section of the menu, click extend subscription subcategory and proceed with the purchase or contact our sales department. It is important to mention that subscription covers your unit with lifetime warranty, as well as three firmware updates a year and support of our team of engineers who designed and continue developing the system. The task panel, the top panel, the service menu and the whole interface are regularly updated as we release new features and improve the user interface. In the About page you see the current firmware version. Any updates are reflected in the product manual. You can find it at atala.com in the Guides section of the product menu. The manual is regularly updated. Some of the articles will help you figure out the best way to configure your network. Other will explain how to work with the system and image from different types of drives or to a specific destination like a password-protected server. You can learn how to use the automation capabilities Taskforce provides via Web API, which is already being used in many organizations. Or you will learn how to use all the multitasking capabilities Task Force has to offer. It is possible to generate a single page manual. It will include all the articles. And you can save it as an HTML file, a PDF file, or have it printed out. 